Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery, <coughs> this will be part 349. Continuing with our lesson titled Cosmic Culmination, this will be part 5. We've been talking about the events soon to take place, which will <coughs> result in radical change in the totality of this existence. Now, <clears throat> Scripture indicates just prior to God's spoken judgment, which we read in Jeremiah 25, 30-31, the world will experience terrifying acts of war. Turn to Luke 21, verse 9. But when you shall hear wars and commotions, be not terrified. Why is he saying that? <coughs> because the emphasis of, emphasis of Scripture is that the wars and the hearings of wars are going to be increasing in intensity. Increasing in devastation. Increasing in affecting all that... <coughs> become aware of it. That's why he says, don't be terrified. For these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. Now, we are entering into this stage as we speak. The inference is the central focus of this will be Israel <coughs> and the things that Israel has to deal with. Scripture indicates Israel will be at that time in a fight for her life. Mm. Now, as we look at the situation that's taking place, Scripture strongly indicates that the war is going to enlarge and is going to include the terrorist faction on our northern border, which we call Hezbollah. <clears throat> it's going to enter into a, an egregious conflict in that, from which she will emerge, uh, I won't say victorious, but she will be sustained. Uh, the enemy is going to suffer egregiously, but the inference is <clears throat> the result of this is going to bring into play all the other Arab Muslim nations against Israel. <coughs> okay, so I pointed out that uh, Ishmael was born uh, as a result of El uh, Whitefeach's decision to bless him, and uh, the Muslim and the Arab countries are all against Israel, who is the chosen people, and Elohim, knowing the, that all this was happening, chose to let it continue on, and then at the end, we, the sons, are going to be involved in correcting the whole thing, and it's just a, an observation I'm making about God's master plan, where it seems as if YHVH has made a mistake from our perspective, but white, but Elohim is taking full advantage of what has happened. <coughs> this is all known before the uh, foundation of the earth. <coughs> it's all being brought to fr fruition to bring about Elohim's master plan. As I look at it at this point, the nations are being drawn together for what will appear to be an end-time climactic event <coughs> that will seal the fate of the human race. 
the centerpiece, of course, will be Israel. Now, in this respect, what we're looking at is a culmination that's going to take place as a result of the acquiescence of the human race to be used and abused by the people that are manipulating it. No, Elohim's not going to step in to stop it. Because if you just look at it from an objective perspective, perspective, you could see how foolish it is. But Elohim is going to use this to further his master plan for the sons. <clears throat> now what we're seeing here, <clears throat> Israel <clears throat> entering into a time <clears throat> in which you're going to have a protracted, egregious state of <clears throat> what would be considered <clears throat> disastrous wars that are going to render that region a desolation. <clears throat> Turn to Isaiah, the 17th chapter. We're going to read verses 1 to 4. <clears throat> The Bible <clears throat> does not focus to a great degree on any one particular nation other than Israel. In other words, it's not focusing on the Arab nations, the Muslim nations. When it refers to them, it refers to them basically as a group. <clears throat> but Israel is always placed in a unique position in relation to this group. Now, <clears throat> as I look at it, Isaiah 17 begins with <clears throat> the war <clears throat> that is about to start on Israel's northern border, and it gives you a picture of the resulting situation taking place from <clears throat> the attrition that's taking place in this war. It's going to affect the Arab and the Muslim nations far greater than it's going to affect Israel in its devastating effects. <clears throat> verse 17, chapter 17, verse 1. The burden of Damascus. Behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, and it shall be a ruinous heap. The cities of Aor are forsaken, they shall be for flocks which shall be which shall lie down, and none shall make them afraid. Now, Damascus is the north of Israel. Aor is the south of Israel. Both are states of devastation. <clears throat> Virtually not being able to support habitation. This doesn't necessarily mean that Damascus has been nuked. What it's giving us is a condition that Damascus has come to as a result of a tricious, uh, unlimited war on her population. <clears throat> it's no longer able to support human habitation. So it ceased from being able to function as a city. Ar <clears throat> are cities <clears throat> that biblically were, were located in uh, what is present day Jordan, Ammon, Moab. They are deserted. They're abandoned. <clears throat> the only ones that are there are the, the flocks and the herds. Why? Because <clears throat> it can no longer support human habitation. People can't farm there. They can't break, grow, crop, grow crops there. Why? Because of continuous, <clears throat> uh, un unceasing fratricide that's taking place. <clears throat> the populations have been devastated. And so they've gone to other places for survival. It's sort of like what you see was going on in Gaza. <clears throat> the fortress also shall cease from Ephraim and the kingdom from Damascus and the remnant of Syria. What does this mean? This means Israel is also suffering. Her strength has been diminished. There shall be as the glory of the children of Israel, saith the Lord of hosts. And in that day it shall come to pass that the glory of Jacob shall be made thin, 
and the fatness of his flesh shall wax lean. So Israel is suffering tremendously also <coughs> in this situation, but not as much as the Arab nations are. And he goes on to talk about how difficult it is to grow things when you harvest, how much of a percentage of that fruit is going to be available for consumption. It's taken down to a <coughs> very thin minimum. All that region, all these people are going to suffer as a result of what's about to take place. But what I want to focus on is Starting in verse 12. Woe to the multitude of many people which make a noise like the noise of the seas and to the rushing of nations that make a rushing like the rushing of mighty waters. This is referring to the Arab Muslim nations that are beyond the immediate area. We're talking about Turkey. Talking about... <coughs> uh, <coughs> the regions that are supporting this war of attrition are still saber-rattling, still preparing more and more and more to invade Israel. Although they're not experiencing the direct results of this because they're not in that area. They're supporting it, just like Iran is supporting Hezbollah. When, it, when, when the thing goes down, Hezbollah is going to receive, on the receiving end first, then it'll go to Iran. <coughs> Well, this is the same type of a situation. These Muslim nations, and it says <clears throat> the rushing, the word rushing there means roar. So they're consistently, vitriolically, through anger, hatred, pointed, directed at Israel, which is what you see now. <clears throat> it's going to reach a point where they are fomenting and supporting and replenishing weapons and arms and all of that <clears throat> to try to take down Israel. That's not working. What's happening is it's devastating the people that are in the immediate region. But notice what it goes on to say. Woe to the multitude of many people which make a noise like the noise of the seas and to the rushing of nations that make a rushing like the rushing of mighty waters. The nations shall rush or roar like the rushing of many waters, but God shall rebuke them. That's the judgment. And they shall flee far off. Now, <coughs> Isaiah sees the same judgment that Jeremiah sees. Turn to Jeremiah 25. And we're going to come back to Isaiah 17. <coughs> They're going to ferment and ferment and saber rattle <coughs> and try to cause as much calamity as possible until Jeremiah 25, <coughs> verse 30. Therefore prophesy thou against them all these words. He saying to them, The Lord shall roar from on high and utter his voice from his holy habitation in anger, in rage. He shall mightily roar upon his habitation. He shall give a shout as they that tread against all the inhabitants of the earth. <coughs> now notice, go back now to Isaiah 17. Verse 13. The nations are preparing to try to assault Israel. These are the guys that have been backing <coughs> the regions that are close to Israel, which are now in, practically in a state of ruin. <coughs> Verse 13. The nations shall rush like the rushing of many waters, but God shall rebuke them and they shall flee far off and shall be chased as the chaff of the mountains before the wind and like a 
rolling thing before the world win. I want to focus on this, the world win. Now, go back to Jeremiah 25. That's why I say Isaiah and Jeremiah see the same thing. Jeremiah 25, verse 31. <coughs> I mean, verse 32. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, evil shall go forth from nation to nation, rebukes them. Judgment comes on nation after nation. They flee. <clears throat> and a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. This is literal and it's figurative. Whirlwind is going to come forth. It's difficult from a human perspective to comprehend what's being said here. When the Lord speaks, He said so many, so many things in motion, physically and spiritually. The repercussions are in the spiritual and in the physical. Yes. <clears throat> so, simplistically, we're talking about a tornado or a hurricane or something other than that. A whirlwind, <clears throat> cyclone. Okay, so that's what I was saying, a cyclone. It, you know, one of them, you know. Which affects the physical and the spiritual. It's going to bring in things that are going to take place which are unprecedented in the human comp comprehension of God is allowing all this stuff to happen. So it's a spiritual cyclone. <clears throat> it starts in the spiritual, right. manifests in the physical. Okay. But it's a spiritual it cyclone. hits nation after nation after nation. And when it hits, many different judgments come forth. <clears throat> Jeremiah 25. Verse 32. Thus said the Lord of hosts, Behold, evil shall go forth from nation to nation, and a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. Now this whirlwind, when it touches, it's going to end in many different things. One of the things, verse 33, And the slain of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth, they shall not be lamented, neither gathered, nor buried. They shall be dung upon the ground. Anybody getting hit by this judgment, he's gone. From one end of the earth, <clears throat> the human race is going to be smeared, pasted on the terrain with nobody to minister a decent burial to them. <clears throat> yes. Think about a worldwide cyclone which brings forth different effects. That's one effect. Turn to Ezekiel 31. And Ezekiel 32. In verse 18. <clears throat> Son of man, well for the multitude of Egypt, cast them down, even her, and the daughters of the famous nations. Who are the famous nations? The nations in Jeremiah 17 that are railing against Israel. This is talking about the descendants of those same people. If you're talking about the descendants of Ishmael, the Arab Muslim nations. Unto the neither parts of the earth, with them that go down into the pit, <clears throat> whom the Zapas in beauty, go down be with them, blame with the uncircumcised. They shall fall in the midst of them that are slain by the sword. She is delivered to the sword, draw her out on all her multitudes. This judgment is going to result in a multitude of different outcomes. Some are going to be <coughs> slaughtered 
by their own people. Some are going to be cast bodily into the neither regions of earth. Some are going to be killed on earth in their spirits. Their souls go down to the neither regions. This is giving you a picture of the Arab Muslim nations as a result of the judgment that's spoken in Jeremiah 25. They all come against Israel. Note what it says. <clears throat> Verse 24, There's Elam and all the multitude round about a grave, all of them slain, fallen by the sword, which are gone down, uncircumcised into the neither parts of the earth, what? Which caused their terror in the land of the living. These are all the terrorist nations that are spoken about today. <coughs> the Syrians, <coughs> the Lebanese, the Iranians, the Turks, all the Arab Muslim nations that join in, the Houthis, all of these guys that are virtually, vitriolically trying to bring about the demise of Israel are going to be included in this judgment. <clears throat> what is the outcome of all this? Scripture teaches <coughs> uh, you read Ezekiel 32 we just read 17 and 18 the daughters of the famous nations cast down <coughs> turn to Matthew 24 Same judgment releases the fourth empire. <clears throat> Matthew 24, verse 7 and 8. For nation shall rise against nation, the kingdom against kingdom, there will be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. <clears throat> the famines the pestilences come as a result of the vitriolic war conditions we just read. <clears throat> areas, huge areas that do not, no longer support life. Mass starvation. People dying in the millions. Yes. Do you suspect it's chemical warfare? <laughs> It's everything. Nothing is left out. <clears throat> Nothing because man now is open to there's no there's no restraint. So he's open to destroy himself, which is what he's trying to do. And which he very, very nearly just, uh, succeeds in. He's, he's, in, he's incited to self destruction as the judgment has come on him. With this comes the rise of the fourth empire. Verse 8, all these, all these are the beginning, beginning of sorrows. This is this, this, the clock is just starting. What we have been reading is the ending of this present state, this present reality. It's gone. Now you have the Fourth Empire, you have the Luciferian reality imposed upon what formerly was the Adamic order. It no longer exists. Therefore you get into verse 9. Then, 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 when? After the establishment of the Fourth Empire. Then, shall he deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. You should be hated of all nations for my name's sake. You will note the difference. Hatred didn't just start here. Hatred has been from the beginning. Men are killing each other on sight. Vitriolic, unbridled slaughter 
on a global scale. So why is he saying you'll be hated? Because this is new. Why is it new? Because the hatred does not stem from <clears throat> a incitation to destroy. The hatred results from an incitation to destroy because of the name of Jesus. Yes. It's all against all? No. Not now. It's all against one. Before, every man's hand was against his brother. Now, every man's hand is against the Christian. Radical change. Note the difference between verse 7 and verse 9. Nation shall rise against nation. Every man against his brother. <laughs> kingdom against kingdom. <clears throat> verse 9. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. You shall be hated of all nations. So the nations are not united. They're not at each other's throats. They're out to destroy the Christian. What happened? The fourth empire happened. You have radical change in human thinking. Why? Because you have the worship of gods now. And the Christian sets himself as a target because he's not worshiping the gods, he's worshiping the true God. And so the Luciferians set the human race against the Christian. Hunt them down, bring them to <clears throat> whoever is in charge, turn to Mark, 14th chapter. <clears throat> I'm saying this because from a human perspective it's difficult to understand how these radical changes can take place. They take place supernaturally. This is not something that would normally happen. This is something that's happening because of supernatural incitation. <clears throat> Mark 13, verse 9. <clears throat> verse 8 tells you this is the beginning of sorrows, the demise of the human order. <clears throat> verse 9, But take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to councils. And in the synagogues you shall be beaten, you shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for testimony against them. Why? These are the gods that people are worshiping. You worship the true God. So you stand before them, you're going to be a testimony that they ultimately are going to come under the judgment of the God you serve and worship. Radical changes <clears throat> brought about through the the total change from the human to the Luciferian reality. Now, <clears throat> all of this is giving us a picture. I can't emphasize enough the change. We, we, we can't comprehend this to the degree that the Bible is giving to us. But I'll try to give you example, an example here. Scripture indicates with the release of the Fourth Empire, the current world will be a perpetual wilderness, never again to be inhabited, except the Middle East regions and some others. Turn to Jeremiah, the fourth chapter, verse 23 to 27. I beheld the earth. So you're getting a picture of the planet from beyond its <clears throat> its surface. In other words, you're out in space looking down at it. I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void. He sees the earth rotating. Everything he sees 
is a desolation. And the heavens, and they had no light. You see the lower regions. <clears throat> They're dark. No stars. Nothing shining. Everything totally black. The thing is a wreckage. I beheld a mountain, so he's down on earth now. And lo, they trembled, and all the hills moved lightly. I beheld, and lo, there was no man. Remember, bodies dead uh, on a global scale. Nobody to bury them. No human activity. And all the birds of the heavens were fled. I beheld, and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness. Can't emphasize this enough. The thing that you see now is going out of existence. It will no longer function. All, all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord and by His fierce anger. This is the judgment. When the Lord spoke in rage and anger, a judgment went forth. This is the result. Vitriolic war, hatred, slaughter on an unprecedented scale, the system that makes the earth to enable it to function no longer functions. It's a scripture almost reflecting Genesis 1 and 2. The earth was tohu vaboru, void, without form. Same condition. But notice what it goes on to say. For thus, saith, thus hath the Lord said, the whole land shall be desolate, yet will I not make a full end. There are going to be places that are going to be preserved on this. <clears throat> Why? Because of the sons of God. The Luciferians are not here. The Luciferian habitations do not come into contact with the human desolations. Why? Because they wouldn't move. <laughs> They want to flourish in the zones in which they cohabit. So you're going to have two conditions in plurality. Devastation and perpetuation. Devastation, the human order has gone out of existence. Luciferians have virtually dominated everything with a an existence which is altered. The human condition will never come back into being. So what's the perpetuation? The perpetuation is the Luciferian condition. Okay. Until such time as that it is broken, of course. Yes. Now, turn to Jeremiah 23, verse 3. I'm going to close with this. and preserve places. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries whither I have driven them and will bring them again to their folds and they shall be fruitful and increase. The Lord is going to preserve, we just read it in Jeremiah, He's going to preserve places for His people. And these aren't going to be devastated places, they're going to be places of beauty where His people will be gathered to await. This takes place at the gathering to await the time of the rapture. So here you have the plan of God basically brought forth.